guys, happy homeschooling favorites day. These are some of my favorite videos to film and share with you guys. Um, homeschooling favorites, if you are not familiar, is something I started a few years ago where every month I shared some of the favorite things we were using in our homeschool, whether it was just resources or actual physical items or objects. Um, but I have since, in the last couple of years, done this quarterly just because I didn't always have a bunch of new stuff to show you. So right now I am sharing our winter homeschooling favorites. This, uh, the last homeschooling, homeschooling favorites video I did, I believe, was in December. So um, these are the things that we have enjoyed since then. A lot of these things are... Um, were Christmas gifts for my kids. I have a thing for educational toys uh, as Christmas gifts, so I have a bunch of stuff to share, a lot more than I usually have to share. Um, but before I get started, a couple of housekeeping things. Number one, um, as you guys know, back in January, I took a little break from YouTube and I said I would come back and kind of figure out a new schedule. I haven't figured out a new schedule yet other than the fact that I'm gonna just be posting at least two days a week instead of at least three days a week. That's what I've been doing since I came back in January. Um, before Vlogmas, I was sharing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or just about. But I noticed that I was starting to get more concerned about this posting schedule than I was about the content. And that's never what I want to do here on my channel. So um, I have committed just to two days a week, although a lot of times it'll be three days a week until I figure out the best posting schedule for, for my family's schedule. Um, hit that little bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified when I do post a video because as of right now, I don't have a consistent day of the week that you can expect to see a video. So if you haven't already, hit that bell and you will get a notification when I post a video. Um, second thing that I wanted to mention, and I guess it kind of goes along with homeschooling favorites, although it's just more of a parenting thing. In my Q&A video with John, John referenced a video that he thought I had already shared. Um, and it was a, a video on Proverbs 22, 6 about parenting. It was just a sermon that he and I loved so much. So I wanted to share that with you guys now because I hadn't linked it on that video. And I figured if I went back and linked it now, then, you know, nobody's going to go back and watch that video. It's, it's from last week anyway. So I'm going to link it up here and I'll post it down in the comments below. It's such a great video, such a great breakdown of that Bible verse and it was just so refreshing to me as a parent instead of um, adding more to my plate so it's just a good reminder of grace and what it really means to raise up a child so if you're interested in that definitely click on that video up there and I hope you enjoy it if you guys watch that video leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought of it so I'm gonna start with games because that's really fun. I love sharing games with you guys. Um, and a lot of these, like I said, were Christmas things. So the first favorite this month or this season is this canoodle game. Now this one is my seven year old son's. And the reason that I'm shocked about this is he has not lost any of these pieces. He actually, this kind of exploded one day when he threw it in the toy bin and he found every single little piece. So if you have a seven year old boy, then you know that they don't really have the most patience in the world. So the fact that he found all these pieces was a really, sorry, there's fruit fly in here, was really um, kind of shocking to me. And then anytime we go to Disney and the kids pack their little bag for the car, he brings this with him and he hasn't lost any of it and it's been two months just about two months so that's a big deal for me um but beyond that if you want to know how it works basically it's all these little pieces it's a logic game all these little pieces they all have different um they're all a different number of little beads there and then there's different challenges listed in here Let's see if i can get it to focus so it tells you which ones to put down and then you have to use the remaining to fill in the gap and then it goes up to a pretty hard level as you get up higher. So this one is a favorite. Both of my older kids have this, um, and I think that they're just about at the right age for it, so seven to 10, um, although it's something that I enjoy using as well. So there's that. I'm gonna stick with logic games first because we ended up getting a lot of one player games for the kids this year. Um, I just think that with their ages, they don't, yeah, lots of interruptions today. Sorry. I just think that with their ages, um, they aren't always wanting to play the same games with each other. So um, it's kind of, they're kind of starting to pull away from just family games all the time. 
So this next one is Clue Master, and it's just like Sudoku, basically. So it came, <laughs> losing all the magnets. Um, here's this, it came in a box, so, um, and I would recommend keeping the box if you get it. So it's this book of challenges, and it tells you either the um, color or the shape, or sometimes it will tell you the shape and the color. Let me see if I can find one. Um, yeah, so see that's a blue tennis ball, but then like right there, it's just showing you it's blue. Um, and then you flip to the back here and you have all these magnets that you can keep there. And this is where you create that same pattern there. Um, and you try to fill in the blanks with the rest of the pieces. So this is just like Sudoku again, um, like I said, but it's not as, um, it doesn't seem as much like math, I guess. My son, this I got this for my seven year old, he loves it. My 10 year old, again, loves it as well. If my five year old plays it, I have to play it with him because he doesn't fully understand it. Um, so then the game that I got for my daughter, and this is one that's been fun for my husband and I to play with as well, it is Cat Crimes. This one is really fun. So you get this board, and then there's this deck of cards, and all of these cards are different challenges. Again, easy all the way up to hard. And it will tell you which cats are upstairs, which means that you immediately remove those cats from the equation, and they're not gonna be a part of it. It tells you a crime, so then you take this little crime card. So there's like spilled coffee. Let's see if I can get it to focus or um, knocked over the fishbowl. You put the crime card on the correct place on the board, so that's the crime that's in question. So there's the coffee, you would put that on the spilled coffee. And then by process of elimination, as you go through all the different clues on the card, you kind of shuffle the kittens around the table and figure out which cat committed the crime. That one can be very difficult. I have gotten it wrong a couple of times, but again, it goes by levels. So it's, you know, my five-year-old can play that one as well. But again, it's geared more toward that upper elementary age range. But the one that I got for my five-year-old has been the biggest hit amongst him and all of their cousins. And my mom actually bought this for her house when she has the nieces and nephews over because the kids were all here one day playing it and they ended up bringing it to a restaurant that we all went to because they couldn't get enough of it. It is Balance Beans. And this one you take, I don't usually show you guys how all of these work, but I'm just excited, really excited about these fresh new toys in our homeschool. So prepare yourself, this might be a long video. So you take this little um, tray and you put it on this, it's a little balance tray. You take this and it tells you which, they're like little weighted beans, it tells you which beans to set on the board. And then it tells you, oh sorry, that's the solution. It tells you which beans to set on the board and in what order, and then it tells you which ones, focus, come on now. Oh well, it tells you which ones to add to it and you have to get it to balance. So, um, and then it tells you the solution on the other side. It has to be a perfect balance. It can't be like that. It has to, and it will balance out perfectly. My son, my five-year-old will sit and play with this game, no doubt for an hour, every single time it is in our warm-up bin. All of my kids love it. They ask to get into it even when it's not school time. They wanna bring it with them every time we go to a restaurant. It's a really great investment and it is not very expensive. This was a great find and I'm really excited about that. Um, were those all the single player games? Yes, so I showed Math Dice in my um, morning basket video. I feel like there's something still in my eye. I think that might be where the fruit fly ended up. Um, so, but I wanted to explain kind of how I play this with all of my kids. So this is Math Dice Jr. It comes with this little teeny little um, game board and then all these little paper pieces, but you can use whatever pieces you want. You can start and have a half game or a full game. Now the way that it's supposed to work is one person rolls the dice and then there's a, a ton of different numbers on there and then rolls all five of these dice and then through means of like addition, subtraction, multiplication, the person, everybody at the same time tries to make this answer. So say it's 12, 
and you roll um, all these numbers. Well, so the, pers the first person to say, I see 12, then can grab as many numbers as they can make into a, a problem and gets to keep that many dice. So say they had uh, I see 12 and they grabbed four, four, six, and two, and they said four plus four plus six minus two. Yeah, that's 12. So then that would only leave one dice. Um, they would get to go four um, spaces because they used four dice. If the other one happened to be a six and somebody else said, I see 12, and, or I see, no, that doesn't work. Sorry, I was thinking the number was six for a second. You get the picture. If, so, if it was a six and a six and somebody said, I see 12 and grabbed two sixes, if anybody else could use those other three remaining dice to make 12, they could then get those pieces, and it just goes on and on. You'll be surprised how many different ways there are to make the solution, but we don't play it that way because my kids are so um, different in age um, because it's not fair for my five-year-old to play my 10-year-old in this game. So what we do is we verse each other and we'll bring it out in our morning basket. And instead of having one person roll the dice and everybody guess, we just go around and one person rolls the dice and then I verse that person. So when I'm playing with Bella, we do multiplication and division. When I'm playing with um, Jesse, we do mostly addition and subtraction, and I purposely slow down a little bit so that he gets some, some of the answers. And when I play with Eli, I just assist him in finding answers, but um, he enjoys it nonetheless. So that's how we play that game. And it is a little bit of just kind of luck because um, it just depends on how many dice they can use to create that and it all depends on how it was rolled So say Bella uses a multiplication problem. and She only gets two dice But then we're able to use four to add to the same number for Eli Then he gets to go four spaces. She only gets to go two. So you never really know what you're gonna get It doesn't really matter how great they are at math um, for that game Quirkle, I think no, I didn't get the recommendation here. I got the re recommendation from Momfessional's blog on this game. This game is kind of like, the best way I can explain it is it's kind of like Scrabble, but with math. Um, or I, I assume something like Domino's. Um, I, to be honest, I've never really played Domino's. But basically, there are different shapes and they're all, uh, there are six different colors. Five, one, two, three, five different colors. Nope, six different colors that they could be. Um, and you add on to each row, it's either all the same color but not a duplicate shape or all the same shape but no duplicate colors. So one person could add these three on and they get three points but then the next person can come and add two more and then they get all five points. It's very, very similar to Scrabble but kind of more, um, you know, with shapes and colors. It is, you'd be surprised how intense that game can get, and it's one that all of my kids can play, obviously not our baby, um, but my five-year-old can participate just the same as my older kids because he gets to have his own turn um, instead of everybody going at the same time, so that's been a really great game. That's kind of our new Kaboom. You guys know we loved that game Kaboom for so long. We still do, but we're on a Quirkle kick right now. Um, and then next I have this Rubik's race, and I'll explain this one quickly as well. So for this, you shake this up, and then however it lands, which is kind of hard to show here. So then everybody races on their game board to make that pattern. Um, here is, it's all taken apart right now. So basically you have this little piece up, you connect it together up in between these two. And all these little pieces are on your game board. And you shift them around as quickly as you can and the first person to make that matching pattern slams down this and they win the Rubik's Race. So that is a really great game. Um, again, the age difference is a little bit difficult but if I play one-on-one -on -one with them, then I can take my time with the younger one or actually verse my older two. Um, and it's not as frustrating as a Rubik's Cube because it's just two-dimensional. Um, was that all the games? That was all the games. Okay, so now I'm going to show you just a couple of STEM toys. I kind of knew this would happen, but Botley, the coding robot, has been the biggest hit in our family. This is probably our family's favorite Christmas gift this year. 
It is, um, it's kind of like the coding, the code and go mouse. It's programming, except with this, you can teach them how to move around objects if they bump into an object. So you can kind of do, you can go a little bit beyond just one uh, pattern. Uh, this is how you enter in all of the different patterns, and it comes with all sorts of different things. So you can have Botley scoop these little cubes up and take it across the finish line. You can put these down and have him follow the lines. Um, and then for the younger ones, there are these so they can build the um, code out before they enter it in. There's a ton of different things that they can. There's little cones. There's these little sticks um, for him to move around. This cone he can bump into and then you can program him to go around it. So that is a big, big hit this year. And um, other STEM style toy is this snap circuits. Now my, my husband, my son, got this snap circuits junior kit from us and then he got the snap circuits arcade kit from my mom. He loves the Snap Circuits Arcade. That's the one he goes for every time. But the reason that I recommend this one and the reason that this is in my favorites video is because this goes over the basics of, um, of the circuits, which is, again, something that I'm not very familiar with. So not only does it tell you what to build, so project number 13, two-speed fan, but it also is explaining why the circuit works this way. What's an open circuit? What's a closed circuit? What's a this? What's a that? Um, whereas the arcade is much more intricate, so he likes that because he's building these elaborate projects. Um, but I like this junior kit just because it goes over the basics and I feel like he's really under, well, he doesn't read it. I make him read it after he's done. He doesn't read it on his own. Um, but I feel like he's getting an understanding of why this circuit is functioning the way it is or why it's not working. If something's backwards, why is this now no longer an open circuit or something along those lines? Um, I have a little bit of a jumble of things now. This is my little miscellaneous pile. It's not games. It's not toys. Um, not this, but this. I got these wooden tracing boards from Exploring Toys this year. If anything, I thought that they would look really cute and farmhousey to put in our schoolroom until my um, daughter was able to use them. So it's all the different uppercase letters and I also bought all of the lowercase letters. It came with these little wooden um, pencils for them to trace and become familiar with the way you write the letter. You guys know I've said it so many times, but if you're new, I pushed handwriting way too hard and I really kind of messed it up for my daughter. So the most, uh, if we can approach handwriting with my younger kids in the gentlest of ways, I will. And I'm really excited about this. So not only can they practice using this similar to a pencil, but they can add little beads or little beans or, um, you know, just feel them. So it doesn't have to be done like uh, with a pencil and using those motor skills. So these have actually become useful. Not that I didn't expect them to be useful, but I didn't, I didn't foresee them being, uh, chosen by my five-year-old as much as they are. You guys know he wants to learn to read. We're working around to bringing that in for him in our homeschool, but until then, he's very content to be using those. And I figured once he did start reading, another way that he could read them, so say we're reading dad, is he could spell, he could spell them out here instead of only reading them on flashcards. I figured we could make a game out of it. Next is this. So this is a little pocket microscope and I saw it on Amazon. My mom does stockings for all of the cousins for Christmas. And so I said, I think this would be a really great stocking stuffer for all the kids because all of the kids just love to be outside. And I think they were around $10 a piece. I did not expect them to be as high quality as they are. These have become the biggest asset in our nature study. They're really, really great. So basically, it comes with little slides and you can put things on the slide and put it in there if you'd like to. You press the button and that lights up and then you can adjust the focus and the zoom. But if you don't wanna put it in the stand, they can just carry it around, set it against things like a leaf or the driveway. I mean, the kids seriously love this. We went strawberry picking and they were exploring the strawberries. You can see that the zoom is so good on this and the, it's just so, let's see, 40 times? Yeah, 20 times to 40 times and then it's got this little light they click, 
my kids love this i love this i'm like looking at my couch and finding all the little dog hairs and things but this is a really 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 great tool this would be a really great birthday gift if you have like an adventurer or you're going to a birthday party and you want to give somebody something useful and not just another toy i really love these you guys will probably see these a few more times before i retire them from my favorites videos, but I really like them a lot. And I brought them with to, we do nature study with friends and I brought them with, and their kids were doing that same thing, looking on their tables, looking on their couches, looking at their floors. It's just really great. Much easier than using um, a standard microscope. Next I have this. This is a tabletop vacuum. And it, let me explain. <laughs> the purpose of this supposedly is to pick up crumbs, but we are way too large and messy of a family for me to use something like this to just clean off our dinner table every night. But the reason I got this was for things like glitter, paper scraps, pencil shavings, and it really works great. Again, this was something that was like 10 bucks. And if you have the space to store it in your school room, it could be really helpful because you know that if you've got glitter, you've got paper scraps and you go like that, it sticks all over your hands or some of it falls on the floor, some of it floats away. So this is just a teeny little tabletop vacuum. And if you have a crafter, it's great. I don't really think it does that great of a job picking up heavy crumbs or anything though. So again, just for school, I would only recommend this for school. I have this, if you guys have, super snacky kids that, and I think that's like the main reason our school day is interrupted is my kids are always wanting snacks. And um, I, I'm constantly stopping to either tell them to get a piece of fruit or if they've had like 10 bananas that day, get them some goldfish or something. Um, and what I'd been doing for a long time was just putting a bowl of like a crunchy snack and then a bowl of fruit out two separate times in the day. Once when we were reading, once we were playing outside between breakfast and lunch and then lunch and dinner. But what would happen is a couple of the kids were more interested in reading the books that they missed the snack because some kids like ate it all or sometimes you know two of them were scootering around and like annie would come and eat the whole bowl of cheese puffs so i bought these these come in a four pack i believe they were twelve dollars for four they all have a different colored lid i'd use these easy lunch boxes like their standard lunch containers for a long time before we got planet boxes but these are the snack boxes so they're four equal sizes here if you are a meal prepper this is a really good option to prep all of the kids snacks early in the day you could do like a fruit veggie a nut and a grain or something have it all prepped they know which color lid is theirs it is majorly cut down on our snack interruptions although half the time i'm still saying go grab your container if you're hungry um so i'm still having to remind them but at least it's already prepared so i don't have to go make the snack Next, I have this little paper airplane fold a day calendar. My mom got this for our family just after Christmas. And I love doing calendar time with uh, all of our kids together. Even though my older two don't wanna sit there and sing, well, they, they do, I, I don't think they love it, but they don't hate it. They don't sing days of the week and the months of the year song. I love doing that as our family warm up every morning before school starts. So you guys know that I use the, um, the morning exercises for all the year, um, which is like my big kids calendar time. So basically we do calendar time with the little kids, then I'll read the day's reading from morning exercises for all the year. And that is how my older two have calendar time and how we relate the date to school. This is a really great option if anybody has kids who don't love to sit through calendar time or maybe they're the youngest sibling so you don't need to do all the sing song and calendar time anymore um they the date is on here for the day and the instructions are for the paper airplane from the day prior so february 13th you have the instructions to fold february 12th's paper plane and it goes all the way through december 31st it's a full year calendar I know it's mid-February already, but if you have multiple kids, it actually might be a great idea to get this now because then you can go and they can all take turns folding Januaries to catch up to where you are. So I wanted to share that because I thought that would be a really unique way to do calendar time in your homeschool um, if you have kids who just aren't super into the idea of calendar time. And then you know that I always have a book or two to share with you. So up until this point, I have showed you time and time again this lift the, lift the Flap Times Tables. It has been consistently one of our favorites for about a year now. My daughter loves it. My son is getting into multiplication now. So this is fun because it makes multiplication. I'm so awkwardly holding this. Um, it's, it's a fun way to do multiplication. 
Um, but we have gotten lift the flap fractions and decimals. We have lift the flap telling time, lift the flap sizes and measuring, the first math, the adding and subtracting. But as soon as fractions and decimals came in our teaching textbooks, I grabbed this for my um, my fourth grade daughter, and this is great. These books just don't disappoint. I love all of these lift the flap math books. I think that anything that makes math more enjoyable is worth the investment. So this is, oh, that's, that's, that's me. I'm being summoned. So I wanted to share that book. Um, also, if you did not see my flip through, I'll post that up here. But this big picture thesaurus is great. If you do narration in your homeschool um, and you notice that your kids are saying some of the same phrases over and over again, I would suggest handing them this book and having them peek through and find some other words that could be useful instead. I have never seen a thesaurus that is illustrated. I've never seen a thesaurus that I have necessarily wanted to pick up. So I'm just, I'm kind of jealous that my kids have these resources now in their education because this stuff just wasn't around for us when we were kids. So I love this. Which other ones do I want to show you? If you keep a um, book of centuries, this is really cool. Or even if you don't, Timelines of World History goes through by the different um, decades and centuries. And it tells you, so say 1100 to 1199, this is what was happening in every continent. This is what was going on. It's a great way to compare with what you already have written down in your um, book of centuries if you do that. And again, I showed this in my um, flip through, but in case you were wondering, it starts at 10,000 BC. I know people, um, you know, everybody has their own beliefs about uh, the earth. And so I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that. This was another one that I showed, but this is just so fun. So this is the Medieval Messenger. This is written like a newspaper, but it's all about the Middle Ages. If you have kids who love comic book style books, this is a really fun book to add to your homeschool, add to your bookshelf. And then last but not least, Annie, what book is this? What book is this? Busy book. Busy day book. This is Annabeth's current favorite book, the busy day book. And so I think I just wanted to show you because I love when she says busy day book. You coming over? Okay. She's a hot mess today, y'all. You want to sit right here? Huh. Okay. Bella was feeding her granola bars for me so I could film this. Um, Lift the Flat by Busy Day. It's such a sweet read. I feel like reading to my younger kids is just something that I... Um, don't make the time for when I'm working with my older kids and I'm focused on their education. And this, these Lift the Flop books are super sweet, but I specifically love this Busy Day book because they're little and they're curious and they're wanting to know, you know, the order of the day, when they wake up, when they take a nap, when they eat snacks. And so it's a really sweet book for them. <laughs> so that is my homeschooling favorites for winter. Um, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know what some of your current favorite items are or resources in your homeschool. No, no Bella, she wants to stay. <laughs> and with that, I will let you go. So Annie, you wanna say bye? Bye. Say happy homeschooling. Happy, happy. <laughs> bye guys. You say? I'm a mess. I'm a mess? No, you're a mess. Hello? Hey. Hi, Lala. Hi, Lala. Yeah, I'm done with my filming. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, what's up? Uh,